to keep you long, I promise, okay? I'm so thankful to what God is doing in the house. Thank you for the one-on-one -on -one ministry. Yeah. Very important ministry. Amen? Amen. Amen. Man, this morning, I, this, this, that I want to bring to you this morning, I, I haven't been fought this hard. I'm trying to get to church and get things together as I have on this. Mm -hmm. So let's just quickly pray. Amen. Father, I just, um, I praise you. I thank you. I am, as Dr. Coles has said, so humbled before you that you would um, even consider using me. Mm -hmm. And you are a good God. And so, Father, I ask you to just let this word encourage, let this word wake us up. Let it make us stronger and better. Mm -hmm. And let us leave here ready for what is yet ahead of us. Mm -hmm. And Lord, I'm careful to give you all the glory for you alone, Lord, are worthy. You belong, Lord, and I thank you and I praise you. And I love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let me just uh, uh, put the warning on this, okay? If, if you uh, have a certain mindset, you may not like it, but I know what the Word is saying. I know what God is saying in this time. I know that things have shifted, uh, both in the natural and in the spiritual. Yes. Things have shifted. Now, it's, it's like when you put a, a, uh, it's like you can put a frog in water, and you can slowly heat the water up, and then it'll boil the frog. If you put him in hot, he'll try to jump out. But what has happened with the church is that I see that we've been put in the pot, and, and the fire has been turned on, but very low. And then it increased, and it increased, and it increased. Mm -hmm. And if you're not careful, mm -hmm. and if the church doesn't wake up, it will boil, and we will die. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I'm, I'm pastor. I love pastor. He's very encouraging. And I, I kind of get the side of things that are like, you, you better watch out. Mm -hmm. I've called to the church and the maturity of the church, and so we're going to grow up today. Amen? <laughs> Amen. So if you get your feelings hurt ahead of time, I'm not sorry. I, it is the word. <laughs> it is the, it's the word. It, and it, and it needs to, sometimes I was talking with pastor. I said, sometimes we need to leave here rejoicing. Oh, that was a good word. Hallelujah. I'm head, not the tail. Blah, blah, blah. Okay? That's real good, and I love those kind of words. But sometimes we need to get down and dirty into it, and we need to understand what is going on, and we need to jump to the battle side of it. Because when you get saved and you are born again, you are indoctrinated into the army of God. And you have a purpose and a plan for your life. And I, I, I hate to say it, but I find and I see in a lot of the church, we are not living up to what God has told us to live up to. So the, uh, the um, title to my message today is Suffer. Nobody likes to suffer, especially me. Let me just tag that real quick, especially me. All right? I'll just put it on me. If I can avoid suffering in any way, shape, form, or fashion, I would usually try to do it. Because it doesn't feel good, it's not happy times, and it, you start questioning things, and so I don't like it. And so the Lord has been speaking this to me so clearly for so many, really for some months now. And yeah, I'm going to get political on you, okay, because this is the deal. The political arena and the United States of America, our government told us that it's separation of church and state. And that you really shouldn't be in government. And you should really just keep the church in your four walls. You can worship God in your church, but you really shouldn't bring it to the school. You shouldn't bring it to your workplace. You know, we'll, we'll let you preach on a corner, leave you alone, because most of the time they think you're crazy anyway. You shouldn't be in government. Oh, no, 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 you shouldn't be in government. When the Word of God plainly says that when the righteous are in authority, the people are happy, they prosper. 
But we don't, we don't, we don't read that. We, we don't want to hear that. You know, because it's easy to hide inside of the church. It's easy to get messages that say, God's going to prosper you, and yes, he is. God's going to bless you, and yes, he is. It's easy to get those kind of messages. And I, and I, and I, I, I sit and I listen to different pastors, and those ones that are really, you know, it's all wonderful, God is good, and, and, and I'm like, yeah, but we need to balance. We, I was a hard nose. We need to balance. I had to be in a church that was very, I don't want to say militant, but it was Christ militant. Okay? You weren't allowed to whine and cry in this church. You just weren't. It was like if you whined and you cried, you need to get on your knees and pray and pray yourself out of it. Okay? You will come out of here strong. You don't get to be that. You don't get to be sick. You sick, you get on your knees and pray. You want us to lay hands on you? Did you pray first? Most people couldn't handle a church like that because in America, we are so used to being stroke pet. Let me just pet you. Let me just tell you it's okay. I don't want to offend you. Got to have the tithes in the offering. Don't want to offend you. Got to keep you in here. Got to keep your money. Listen, the Lord says that you give because you love the Lord, not out of compulsion. You give because you love the Lord. So if you don't love the Lord, don't give. See, churches don't want to say that because when you build a big church, you need the money to keep the monster moving. <laughs> I'm coming this morning. Okay, you guys would be way too much this morning. Okay? All right. And so I'm angry now. I'm angry at what I'm seeing in the church. I'm angry at the lies that are coming from the church. I heard a pastor sit on Facebook and say, abortion is not the only thing God is concerned with. Because we had a president that was for the church. Come on, amen. Come on. That was against abortion. He was for life. Yeah. And he made that statement. And I thought, whoa. And the Lord quickly spoke to me and he said, No, it is not the only thing that I am concerned about. But understand this. You as a Christian and you as a person or a party or a group, or a church, you can put a grocery store in a poor neighborhood. You can put a doctor's office in a poor neighborhood. You can help the poor and the underprivileged. This is something you can fix, but I want to know the one person that can put a baby back together after it's ripped from the mother's womb. Let's get real. I want to know who of you can do that. And I thought, well, I said, no. I get it. It is a matter that he is greatly offended by. But yet, the church has sat still, or the church has become worldly. They call them progressive Christians now. I call them worldly Christians. And now they condone it in the church. As a matter of fact, they put the abortion clinics in the poor neighborhoods and go to the pastors and tell the pastors, in which I heard big pastors say this under their breath, and it really, it, it offended me, if you want to talk about being offended. That offended me, because I knew it offended God. Well, you know, sometimes it's better to live not to be born into a poor situation. Who made you God? <laughs> when the devil lied, and tricked us and told the people and we believed it for a while that it was just a glob and it wasn't nothing when God says I knew you in your mother's womb when did he know you from the very beginning the moment that sperm touched that egg he knew you let's get real and most of us in the church don't want to get real because we don't want to suffer and I want to tell you that being a Christian, suffering is a real thing. And we don't hear it preached enough. We don't hear preach, hell, preaching hell anymore in church because I've heard even pastor's kids say, well, I don't believe in hell. Well, I, surely when you wake up and you raise up your eyes in hell, you'll believe it. <laughs> Come on. They don't preach it in church.
church anymore. I'm not going to scare people away. You want to use a friendly message. No, I don't want to use a friendly message. I want a message that's going to send you to heaven. I want a message that is going to strengthen you so when the devil raises his head up and gets in your face, you got the power and the anointing on your life that you can wear your children down. And you can say, that's not what God says. And I believe the word of God because there's but one way to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ. There are not many ways to heaven as they're trying to talk about now. I'm going to preach the truth. There's only one way. If you want to get into heaven, it's like if they want to come in your door. They knock on the door, and the door is open under you, and you walk in the door. The only door to heaven is Jesus. That's it. That's it. We've got to get solid on what we believe, and we cannot be afraid to say what we believe. Marriage is between one man and one woman. When did you become more merciful and more gracious and more loving than God? Well, they love each other. When did you become God? When did you become the one that decides something that was ordained and set into place in Genesis? From the beginning. And now the government knows better than God. And we just travel along with it. And I know we have people in our family that may be gay and may be in that lifestyle. I don't hate anybody. God doesn't hate anybody. Let's get that clear. But he hates the sin. Everybody has a pull towards sin in their life, if we want to be honest. Because we live in a fallen world and we are fallen individuals working out our salvation with a God that loves us. So anybody that walks around acting like they all got the bag of chips, you put them back in the bag and send them back to the store because they're wrong. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't run up on people and try to point out their sin and stuff. Don't do it. Your job is to pray for them. Your job is to lift them up. And there will become a time when you have to speak to them. But you speak to them in love. And you better make sure you're coming in love because then you're going against the word of God. So be careful. Be careful. I went to the definition of suffer. I'm going to try to get you guys out of here quick. I went to the definition of, of suffer. The first definition is to experience or be subject to something bad or unpleasant. So we say we should not, I'm going to talk about it, we should not be in government. Yeah, you should. If you're a mom or if you're a dad, if you're a grandmother or a grandfather, what they are teaching our children now in school is downright devilish. I am so angry, I told them, don't you teach my granddaughter that because she is a child of color, that she is less than. You better not teach her that. And don't you teach my granddaughter, who happens to be white, too, that because she has white in her family, that she's like a terrible person because you're the one that subjugates everybody. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Don't you teach my children that. Don't you teach that one race is bad and another one has been put down. And don't you teach my children that. Don't you put that on my children. Don't you do it. And I'm real aware of what's going on. And if you're not, shame on you because you should be aware of what's going on. You should be listening and you should be aware, not that you can be afraid, but that you can be active and you can be alive because God has called. He said, occupy until I come. Do business. Do the work. Get involved. Be busy about me. So why can't you be in the school making sure that they're doing the right thing? Occupy until I come. Why can't you be the one that is setting up the curriculum and saying, no, we're not going to have this curriculum in our schools? I bet most of us don't even know anything about what's being taught in the school system right now, especially if we don't have children in there. Now, do, how many of you know about the Equality Act? Let me, do you know about it? How many of you know about the Equality Act? It's coming. I like it. What is going on right now to Esther? And Esther was in a political situation. I'm not going to go and read a whole lot. I'm going to give you the verses. You can write it down. You can go back and read it. Esther 3.13. Listen to me. 
They went in, and, and, and uh, Haman went in, he didn't like the Jews, he didn't like uh, what was going on, and he got embarrassed, and he was upset, and all that, and he went to the king, and he said, look, we're going to go kill all these Jews, and they were going to do it in one day. And Esther's uncle found out about it, came, got, to, got to her, got her message, told her what was going on, and said, you are in the arena of the political system here. You are married to the king, so you are in the arena of the political system. And she says, well, he ain't talked to me in a month. And he's like, how do you know that it is not for such a time as this that you were born? He said, don't be so arrogant as to think that it won't touch you because you were in the kingdom and you were in the king's palace. Don't be so arrogant that you think it's not going to touch you. Don't be, do you hear me? Don't be so arrogant that you think it's not going to touch you because you're sitting in the kingdom of God. And I like an Esther to the church. Because she says, look, we're going to fast and we're going to pray. Everybody in, in, in my influence here is going to fast and pray. You tell the people to fast and pray. And I'll go before the king. And I'm going to intercede on your behalf. Because what's coming will kill you. And she goes in, into the political arena. And she goes to the king. Well, if you've read the story of Esther, you know that he couldn't take the decree back. But what he did is he said, look, we're going to put something in with this. And we're going to say that the Jews can pick up arms and they can defend themselves. So it ain't going to be so easy to kill them now. <laughs> and it made all the difference in the people that would live or die. What difference are you making? Hmm. This is a picture of the church standing up fasting and praying, but not just fasting and praying 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 and praying. Well, you should. But she also got up, put on her finest, and went before the king. And I love this because she just didn't go in there with no plan. The girl went in with a plan. Number one, she went in looking good. <laughs> Number two, she knew how to work the system. She knew how to work the situation. Do you know how to work the situation that we are in now? Have you asked God? Have you girded yourself up? Have you fasted? Have you prayed? Have you asked Him, what can I do? And she went in. And her word was this, if I perish, I perish. We don't want to suffer. We don't want to, to suffer the, 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 the names and all the things that come with standing up for God. We don't, want to, we don't want to, it's uncomfortable. Let me tell you about the Equality Act right quick. The Equality Act will take away gender. That means that your little daughter or your granddaughter or your grandson, because this thing now is so perverted in this world, now it flips both ways. They'll go in a restroom and some big old burly man can be in the same bathroom as her. It won't be women, men, and genderless. It'll be restroom. It is a direct assault against the church. Do you know that? You need to pull that up and you need to read about it and you need to find out what it says. This is what the Democrat Party is doing to, the, to America right now. And I don't care if you're a Democrat, if you're Republican, you're independent, you need to know the truth, okay? I'm not one party or another party simply because my mama was or this or that. I listen to the platform and I want to be as close to God as I possibly can be because I know when the godly are in authority, the people prosper, they're happy people, okay? They've already destroyed thousands of jobs with the pipeline and they'll tell you all kind of lies about that and now we are beginning quickly once again to be energy dependent on other countries when America was energy independent. Do you know that? Yes. This is why gas prices are going up. You took a whole community of people and took good paying jobs away from them so that they could feed their children and have a blue collar job that would actually give them the opportunity to be well fed and, and homes, they took that away and shut it down just like that, nothing. Let's look at Texas. 
Texas went all Green New Deal, okay? So a lot of their stuff was a Green New Deal, okay? They tell you that, at first it was global warming. And then stuff starts freezing, so now they call it climate change. You need to pay attention. See, we don't pay attention. You know, I, I hate to say it. You are so, you know, what is it, spiritually minded that you know earthly good. <laughs> All right? You know, you sit around, oh, I'm, I'm praying, sister. I'm, but what are you doing? And you know why you don't do it? Because you don't want either your family or your friends or people around you to call you names, to call you a Bible thumper or a holy roller, and you don't want them to get mad at you. You want to be invited to everything. You want to be all up in everything. So you won't stand up and tell the truth. But I'm like this. Look, I think that the, the, the dinner table at any occasion is the time that you need to talk about God as a religion. You need to talk about God and politics because we raised our young children and we raised our grandchildren to know the truth because the truth will keep them free. And I'm like, don't you believe me every time you tell me this book? Come on and sit down here with me and let me tell you what God has to say about it. And let me tell you what you should be doing. And you need to search out the truth. I'm not going to beat you over the head with nothing, but let me tell you the truth. So you can take this side and this side. You can weigh both sides and you can find out what the truth is. And you know what the truth is? What God says. Amen. And I've never talked to so many people that have been of the Democratic Party that get mad when you try to tell them the truth. It blows my mind. Blows my mind. It blows my mind. The level of hatred that was perpetuated out of, I'm sorry, out of the Democratic Party, out of that party, and what they fed to the Democratic people that were in that party, and they ate it hook, line, and sinker, and never looked any further than what they were telling you. Amen. I tell you even this, if we preach a word in this pulpit and you don't go home and search it out for yourself, then you are wrong. Yes. And you're lazy. Yes. You need to get in this word and you need to figure it out for yourself and you need to read it yes. because when you come in here, it should bear witness to what God is saying to you. You ought to be looking to see where you can be effective. You ought to be training your children to be effective. You ought to be active in the political arena of this, this city. You should know what's going on in this city. You should have something to say. The church has been silent way too long. And now we have the Equality Act, which means that we could not discriminate between somebody that one day he comes into church looking like a man and the next day he comes in looking like a woman. And then they can say, well, they won't hire me because they don't like, what is it, transgender people. We, you, we can't no longer say, you can only work here, you can only teach here if you follow the tenements of the Lord. If you follow the tenements of the Word of God, then you can work here. We can no longer say that. That means that, that don't trust me. Trust me. They will infiltrate and push it. This is why you see a gay couple come into a bakery and they'll say, bake me cake. And the baker says, look, I really don't do that. It's against what I believe. And then they go and sue them 
Well, why don't you just go down to the street to the person that'll cook you the devil own cake? Why you gotta sue them? See, here's the deal. They wanna make it. I'm sorry. The color of my skin I was born with. This is insulting. The color of my skin I was born with. The color of your skin you were born with. All right? You get to choose your sexual preference. I don't get to choose the color of my skin. God made me this way. And I'm happy he did. Do you hear what I'm telling you? They want to be on the same level. They want the same rights, which means you cannot discriminate, period. Which means they can infiltrate anywhere. Anywhere. And if we stand in the pulpit and we preach against it, then it's hate speech and we get sued and go to jail. They are coming after the church. Yeah. Know what you're standing with. Mm -hmm. Everybody bought hook line and said, hate Trump, hate Trump, hate Trump, hate Trump. Little brothers, hate Trump, I hate Trump, I hate Trump, I hate Trump, I hate Trump. Trump's a racist, I hate Trump, I hate Trump. <laughs> and they never stopped to look past what was going on. They never stopped. You didn't stop to look past what was going on. What was I'm talking to the church now. What was going on and what was really being done and what was really being said and whether it was true or if it was a lie. Because when you stand for righteousness, people will lie on you. They'll lie on you. Let me move on. To be affected by or subject to an illness or ailment. Let me start this with saying, God wants you healed. Yes. He wants you well. Yes. He does not want you sick. Right. But the fact of the matter is, is that there are people that live with sickness every day. Chronic sicknesses. There are people that die sick every day that love the Lord. God does not get glory for your sickness. There's no glory in that. But he can get glory through your sickness. Amen. Now let me explain this to you because see the faith movement says that if, if, if you're sick then somehow it's your fault. I always hear that. It used to break my heart to hear that. And I'll just take you to, you know, when the disciples came to Jesus and they said, um, we read the scriptures, John 9, uh, 1 through 5. Okay, if you take the time at home, you can read it, write it down. You really need to be writing this down so you can read this when you get home, so you can verify what I'm saying. Don't just believe me and read it, because you're going to need to read it to be strong, okay, for yourself, okay? You know, when the disciples come to him and they said, the blind man from his birth, and they say, well, who said his mom or his dad? You know, that he would be born like this because that's, this was their mentality. And he said, neither. But it was for the glory of God, that the, glory, that the works of God could be manifested. And then he spit in the mud, you know, and they could see, you know the story, you know the story where he heals the blind man, he spits, makes you know, mud, puts it on his eyes, and you know, he, he gets healed, okay? But I want, I had that, that statement, so that the glory of God could be manifested. So that the glory of God could be shown. Mm. The perfect will of God is that you get healed. That's the perfect will of God. Mm -hmm. But I want to tell you, I have people that are around me, that they are sick and they are battling illness. And the first thing that we do is we check ourselves to see if we have any art within us, if we have any uh, um, uh, unforgiveness in us. We check ourselves. Yes, we do. We check ourselves. But you must be careful checking yourself that you don't bring condemnation on yourself. Okay? Because the devil likes to slip in there while you're checking yourself and say, see, see, God got you sick. That's why you're sick. It's because this, because that. He'll bring everything up against you. And I've seen people believe in God until the day that they die for their healing. They suffer daily. They suffer in their bodies daily. They suffer watching their children suffer in their bodies. But here's where God gets the glory. 
And it blessed my heart because I had a dear, dear friend of mine, Sister Liz, who came to this church, danced before the Lord. We all loved her very much. But every time I went over there to see her, even when she couldn't catch a good breath, she was like, thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Bless your name, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. When you can't say nothing else. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Did she get healed? No. She died from her illness. But I want you to know her daughter came. She said, how can a God, and she served God all her life, how can God let her die like that? And I said, let me tell you something, sweetheart. I said, come sit next to me. I said, your mother, not one time, cursed God. Your mama praised God to her last breath. God was glorified through it all. Do you hear me? God in her suffering, in her pain, in her gasping for air, was glorified in her suffering. And I know that that go along with the whole faith movement and all that, but I'm telling you, okay, that bothered me for many, many years with different people that I've seen that knew the Lord and loved the Lord, and they went on to be with the Lord, and they never got healed, and I questioned it, and I, and I got to the point where I said, I don't know. I know this, that if you are suffering with any kind of illness and any kind of pain in your body, your responsibility is to continue to confess the word of God. Your responsibility is to continue to speak over your body. Your responsibility is to continue to keep your place in not of works, but it is the grace of God, that it is the love of God, and to receive the gift of healing. That's your responsibility. But I want to tell you, that's why I love that song. Even if he doesn't, I'll still stand. Yeah. Yeah. Even if he doesn't deliver you, can you still suffer through and still magnify the Lord in your life? Can you do it? Yeah. I've seen people do it. I watch them yeah. talk to them every day. Yeah. I watch them hurt. Yeah. Hurt. Mm. And still confess. God's healing me. God's healed me. I thank God I received my healing. I praise God. And still come and bless the name of the Lord. Yes. We got to get real, church. And we got to quit beating up people because they're sick. And we got to get alongside of them and continue to pray with them and continue to speak the word with them and continue to show people where God is getting, he's getting the glory. No, is, is the glory in their sickness? No, God doesn't glorify in their sickness. No, but can he get glory through their sickness? Yes, he can because their mouth is still fixed on the Lord. Their heart is still fixed on the Lord and they are still believing for their healing. So I say to you, if you are dealing with anything in your body, don't stop confessing. Don't stop praying because people are watching you. And if it takes you to your death, at least those around you, like I could say about my wonderful, beautiful sister Liz, she praised God down to her last breath. And I know I'm going to see her in heaven. People suffer. To become or appear worse in equality. We are seeing that now. They are coming after the church. The people that are in office now and in control now, this is how it has to work. In order for you to bring communism into place, in order for you to make everybody the same and give everybody the same and everybody have the same and everybody move the same, nobody's better than nobody else, first of all, they have to divide you by race so that you're fighting each other so that they can come in and say they're the answer. Second of all, they have to take God out of the equation because we have been given in the United States an alienable rights given by God, not by man. Do you hear me? Do you know what it says? Do you know how America was founded? We have rights given by God. Well, they have to get God out of the equation so that they can say you have rights given by the government. And if you think I'm lying, you need to get online and you need, really, you need to get deep and you need to start studying and you need to go back to some of the old history books, not that mess that they're teaching our kids now, but some of the old history books and you need to start digging a little bit and find out what's going on because it's coming. 
If the church continues to sit quiet and say nothing and do nothing, it is going to overtake us. And this bothers me more than anything. I say, well, Jesus is coming. So we're just going to wait on Jesus to come so that it can be this utopia for us because Jesus is coming and, you know, it's going to happen anyway. How selfish of you. I'm saved and so the rest of y'all can just go to hell. How selfish of you. That you would sit back and you would allow this to happen and you have nothing to say about it because Jesus is coming. That you wouldn't want the word of God freely preached. Yeah. That you wouldn't even want those in government to repent and to turn from their wicked ways and be cleansed and saved. Mm. How selfish of you. I'm saved, me and mine, we got to be going. Bye. <laughs> no, but that's how the church has been. Me and mine, we're good. Jesus is coming, so he's going to wait for him to come. What did he call? The, the, the talents when he gave the one. He said, you are wicked. <coughs> Straight up. He didn't mention no words. See, the Bible don't mention no words. If you read it like it is, it don't mention no words. You wicked servant. Mm -hmm. You took and buried my talent. What's wrong with you? Mm -hmm. You know I was coming back expecting something. <coughs> that would be Matthew 5 and 11. Yeah. And 10. 10 and 11. You write it down, you go read them. Amen? Amen. I'm running out of time here, but I'm going to keep you guys much longer. Uh. Matthew 19, 14, Mark 10, 14, and Luke 18, 16. To allow someone to do something is to suffer like Jesus said, suffer the little children to come unto me. Oh. And I thought, okay, suffer the little children to come unto me. He said, no, nay, make a way. Oh, yeah. Make a way for them to get to me. Suffer the little children to come unto me. You make a way. You put aside some of your wants and your needs and your desires. You make a way. You make a way for people to get to me. Suffer the people to come to me. Suffer the little children to come to me. This is why the children's ministry is so very important and why the devil fights it the hardest is because when you start pouring into your children because this is what they said. They said if we can get the children, which is which is why they went into the school, they begin indoctrinating our children and now and they, were, they almost got it. With the rest of us older people going to be with the Lord and there's nobody left to tell them what it was like before. Then they can tell them anything. Because they have nothing to reference to. Because most of the time, we as grandparents and parents are not telling our kids the truth about the situation. Don't come up in my house. <laughs> Talk of that mess. Okay. All right? Because I'll sit you right down at the kitchen table and I say, now, now, so really, now you want to tell me why you feel that way. And let's talk about this. Since, you, since this is your opinion, then you need to be able to back up your opinion. <laughs> or don't say it. Grow up. Back up what the Word of God says. Yes. Suffer the people to come unto me. Suffer the little children to come unto me. It's important that you pour into your children. It's important that you pour your history, your walk with God, what you came from and where God has brought you. It is important to teach your children that. It is important that your children see you grow up in the Lord. It is important that you, you act one way in church and you go home and you act like the devil himself. And so they look at Christianity and they say, well, you hypocrite. Well, they don't want to come to church no more. Well, do you live your life outside the church the way you try to make it appear inside the church? It's time to grow up. It is time to live this thing. It is time to be what God has called us to be. It is time to break away from the laziness and the laxation and the complexity and the you know, complacency of all this. And it is time to dig in because I'm telling you right now, it's coming. If we don't stand up, if we don't say anything, if we don't get busy, if we don't start moving, they're going to shut the word of God down and the church is going to have to go underground in America. You don't think it can happen? It can. They're working on it. They're working on it. Look at the platforms that are coming forward. Look up the Equality Act. I really want you to look, because if that goes through, we're in trouble. And you're going to suffer more than you want to. 
undergo, undergo martyr or execution. I say this, we have not come to that place fully in America. But now, if you stand up for something, if you stand up for even a party that loves Christians, I want to say it right now, I had a Trump hat. I wouldn't wear it in public because my kids were scared for me to wear it. I told them that I was like 20, 30 years younger, I'd wear it because I could scrap with you. you know? <laughs> 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 now I have pepper spray you put the go back in my face. <laughs> have they beat you up for speaking the truth? When have you ever seen in America that they will shut you down? I, I love the My Pillow guy. People don't like him. I love that guy. That guy is awesome. Okay. He is a bonafide drug addict. I mean bonafide drug addict. Okay, God got a hold of him and turned his life around. And he's standing up for the truth. And they took all of his merchandise out of a whole lot of stores. He's losing money. He's losing revenue. He's suffering in that, you know? You know, and, and he's he's like, well, what? okay, I just praise God. I'm gonna keep telling the truth and keep praising God because God delivered me out of my drug addiction. Okay. And so there's nothing that's greater than my relationship with God, not even my money, my, my, my business, none of that's greater than most of us will do that. That's greater than God. I love him even more than that. I love him more than life itself. And I'm going to keep telling the truth. I'm going to keep funding what the truth is. And I'm going to keep moving forward. I'm going to keep moving forward. We don't see that anymore in, in, in everyday people. You know, oh, I can't lose my job. I can't lose this. I can't lose that. You know, there are ways that you can go in and you can talk without you having to just always say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Speak the truth. Yes. You can speak the truth. And people will want to know about the truth. And you have the opening to present Jesus to them. See, we're not smart. He said, be wise. Be gentle. But be wise. God help us. Pray for those that are having their heads chopped off, that are being China, that are being sent yes. to camps, Christians, and I, I forget how you pronounce it. Um, they're, they're a Muslim group, okay? And I, I, I feel like this. I don't care who you are. You do not deserve to be put into camp. You do not deserve to be tortured and beat for loving or having a particular religion. Because see, this is how God is. You want to love me, I want to love you. Yeah. You don't want to love me, you want to go to hell. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to, but I'm not going to make you. Mm. Think about it. Yes. That's how great our God is. Yes. And I don't think you have to be <laughs> And then if you have Bible who stands up and says, well, that's just their culture. What? <laughs> 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 if you have a pencil, you need to write this down. I, I didn't read a whole lot of scripture to you because I didn't have a whole lot of time, but I, I gave you where the scripture's at. You should have been writing them down so that you can go home and you can read them for yourself, okay? You really need to read these for yourself, okay? Uh, have the right mindset. <coughs> Some of these kind of blew my mind. So, you know, they count it as an honor to suffer with Christ. Mm -hmm. They say if you don't suffer with Christ, then you don't get to reign with Christ. Mm -hmm. But everybody else is preaching, it's all wonderful, it's great, praise the Lord, you're going to be prosperous, God walks through you with a name, he'll give you everything, and you'll have everything, and you'll never suffer nothing. A lot of places are preaching, it's, you're so great, you're so awesome, it's all about you, blah, 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 and they don't tell you that if you don't suffer with Christ, you're not going to reign with Christ, yes. and there will be suffering in this world. That's why I love that song, there's another in the fire standing next to me. There's another in the waters. He's holding back the sea. Yeah. Because I have to hold on to that. Yes, yes. I have to trust to that. Yes. Because people now are waxing evil. Yes. And I have great respect for that young lady in that school where he held that gun to her head and he said, Denounce Christ. And she said, I can't. And she 
came to come to life. There's coming a day when you will have to have that kind of faith. Grow up, church. Don't let the devil take over America without a fight. Stand up. Write these down because you need to read these. Acts 5, 41 to 42. Acts 5, 41 to 42. Romans 8, 17 and 18. Philippians 1, 29. 4, 12 to 14. 1 Peter 3, 14, 70. Just read the whole chapter, chapter 4. Okay, that'll straighten you up real quick. <laughs> that'll stand you up and get your mindset right. Meditate on that for the next week. Read chapter, chapter 4. Just read chapter 4. And let's understand, yes, we have healing. Yes, we have provision. Yes, we have prosperity. Yes, we do. Yes, we have joy. We have a joy beyond human comprehension. Yes, we do. Yes, we have all the wonderful things that God has promised us. Yes, we do. But he also puts you in a position now and this time that you are going to have to stand up for what is right. You choose. You choose. Either you tell the truth or you lay down and you become the carpet for the devil and let him walk all over the United States. Excuse me. Let him walk over America. Church, God loves you. He's equipped you. He's not asking you to do anything that you do not have the capability to do. If he tells you to step forward, bless God, he'll anoint you for it. If you put your and I love Peter, it was this is how it is now. The waves were great, and you look out there and you see Jesus and you get scared. You're like, what in the world? And, and, and he says, Oh, it's Jesus, Lord, bid me come to you. And he says, Come on, just like that, come on. And he gets out of the boat and he starts to walk on the water. Yeah. Hear me, church. This is you. This is you. And when he looked around. And the waves were great. You've been in the ocean and the waves have been big, man. We were in Hawaii, the big old waves came up. I ran off the beach. I was like, heck no. I dropped off the hand. I was like, if you ain't running, I'm leaving you. Bye. <laughs> I mean, I could just imagine the waves were great, you know? And, and he got scared. And it didn't say that he, bam, sunk to the bottom. It said he began to sink. Do you hear that? It means he started going down. And Jesus caught him. So if you step out and you begin to sink, Jesus is there to catch you. So fear not, children of God. You were born for such a time as this. You stand in the grandeur and the beauty. And the beauty, and I, I'm, I'm taking you longer, the beauty is this. They worked on her and put perfumes and everything for well, six months. Okay? So her skin even smelled like perfume. God has been working on you for years. So your skin should radiate the beauty and the blessing of God. So go before. Step out. Tell the truth. Pray. Do your part. Do not let what God has given us and the opportunity to continue to preach the gospel and to continue to reach out to those that are lost and give them the word of God because we want to take as many people with us as we possibly can. And that just doesn't mean one-on-one, -on -one, which is a beautiful thing, and we should be doing it, we should be doing it, but it means that you have to get involved in every arena that is presented to you yes. because you should be the influence. Remember I preached on being the salt. You should be the influence yes. in this world, not the devil. Amen. What is wrong with us? So I know I came at you pretty hard, but let me leave you with this. God loves you.
he'll never let you sink. He may start to, but he's always there to back your head. <coughs> he's always there. And the fun thing about it was that he said, grab his hand, they were back in the boat. Woo, that's pretty good yes. to me. Hello. They said he had to walk all the way back. He said, they go back in the boat. <laughs> I know you guys have not kept a little while longer today. Church was a little longer, but I pray that it blessed you. I pray that it gave you. I pray that it strengthened you. I pray that it let you know that God has equipped you and He loves you. No matter where you are, He loves you and He is working with you. And amen. Continue to be pliable and vulnerable in Jesus' name. Amen.